So I asked you what YouTuber you think has the best editing on the platform. And this was a video that was suggested in the comments. I was told that it was a simple but very interesting way in how it was edited and all of that. So whenever this video was suggested, I was thinking, okay, it's gonna be maybe 20 minutes, 30 at most. No, an hour and 14 minutes. So I was shocked. This is gonna take up a whole video. Man in cave re-upload from the internet historian. I mean, performed pretty well. So we can check out what all the hype is about and look at it from an editor's perspective. We've got the sparkling water. That's how you know it's a serious video. Nice and sparkly. And let's check it out. Sorry for the re-upload, fellas. The original got copy struck. Rip. But don't worry, we are working on new main channel videos. Here's a sample of the timelines. In the meanwhile... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Let's look at this. This looks like Premiere Pro. Got some stuff layered on stacked. All right, let's continue. Hold on, okay. That's a lot of words. Adjust your screen brightness until the text on the left is barely visible. I haven't, I've never seen a YouTube video do that or say that. In the state of Kentucky, there is a cave that every now and then demands a sacrifice. January 30th, 1925. A man walks towards the cave with a kerosene lamp in his hand. He hangs up his jacket and ducks into a five-foot opening. The inside of the cave is small. He has to go on hands and knees, crawling through passages of sharp stone and choking dust. Then So already, hold on, let's make sure we got this on HD. Okay, it's only 1080, all right. So already, you know, we got the black bars, super cinematic feel to it. It's kind of an animation with the way it's edited, but I can understand what he means by a simple but interesting way. It's kind of animated with pictures in a way. And so obviously you got the lamp and all this stuff and then the characters moving. So yeah, it's in black and white Down right a now. Shoot. I wonder if it's gonna be black and white the whole thing. I guess we'll see. He had cleared out months earlier. All of the daylight is gone from here, and this lantern is his only source of light. Ignoring the loose limestone rocks pushed directly above him, he is now 100 feet in, and here he reaches the turnaround room. Now they call this the turnaround room because this is the juncture where even experienced cavers say, no thanks, and turn around. Because to continue on means going through this, the squeeze, a gap in the stone of only nine inches. For reference, here's a subway sub. <laughs> All right. A lot of the text and stuff is pretty, pretty simple font, kind of 2D. Uh, it got shadows behind it. Stuff like that. For reference, he has a subway yes. sub. And then a 2D cutout of a subway sub. A foot long. Which I've heard it's not actually a foot long, but... Who knows? Going through, he would look exactly like this. His arms will need to be completely at their side and he will need to exhale so that he can reduce the size of his torso. Gradually, bit by bit, he disappears into the hole. His clothes are caught on sharp gypsum crystals, hooking into him and threatening to hold him in place. Using just his feet, he... Okay. We actually, okay, we gotta talk about the editing here. So... One, I want to start off with, this is a very, well, I mean, I said it at the beginning of the video in the text, it's, it's a narration type of video, very calm music behind it, ambience kind of, 
uh, there's, it's, I mean, it's not even really music. It's more ambience. Uh, and he's just explaining what's going on about man in cave. And I would never do this cave stuff. That's all I'm going to say. That is all I'm going to say. But again, the same type of style. It's like 2D cutouts, but animated. It's pretty cool. Unique. Pushes himself forward. He reaches a wider opening at the other side. Okay. Then crawls forward towards a ledge. Lit by the lamp is a drop about twice his height. There's already a rope here. He gently climbs down. His worn out leather shoes touch the ground. This is as far as he can Sound go. Sound effects indicating what's going on. Uh, cut to black there because they didn't actually show him hitting the ground. So it gives you an indication that he did. And it is time for work to begin. What he is working on is another opening. At the moment, it's too small for anyone to fit through, but he will chip away at it until he can shove himself right through the other side. Because on the other side Man. is this, an otherworldly cave structure dripping with pristine white crystal. That was an interesting transition. The other side. Because on the other side... Hold on. Is this. Okay. All right. Yeah, it kind of morphed, I guess. Yeah. An otherworldly cave structure dripping I don't with... Know, maybe a zoom in would have looked nice with that. Because it's going to the other side. I mean, this video has 2.3 million views, so... Obviously, people enjoyed it. Pristine white crystals. Every day for months, he has been removing rocks from this crevice. To him, this is all just routine. So he shimmies further into the gap. So far, it's still black his and white. His body contorting to the shape of the crevice as he wriggles his way in. The walls becoming so tight that he can no longer use his arms. Then, about halfway, he stops. Hmm, the lantern. It's starting to dim. He will need to go all the way back to the surface to re- Wait. Starting to dim. Did it just brighten up? Put that in reverse. You're good. Did it just brightened up? But he will need to go all the way back to the surface to refuel the thing. He sighs. He slowly shuffles back out, pushing the lantern with his shoulder. Then, oh no, ding, crack, darkness. He has knocked over the lamp and it has broken. Oh, brother. The man breathed deeply and relaxed. He had been in worse situations before and he was confident he could navigate his way to the surface through feel alone. He searches around with his feet to find something he can push against. Ah, there's something, he thinks. But what he doesn't know is that he's pressing against a loose rock on the ceiling. As soon as he puts his weight against it, it comes free. A so no way! I'm definitely not going cave crawling after this video. But anyway, they definitely paid attention to the way it was written and is very much so uh, exp an explaining video. And yeah, it's got just different effects just going through. It's got that ambient sound behind it too with the sound effects. And hey, this proves you don't need retention editing to get millions of views. Solid I think that's been proven a lot. He's weighing 15 kilograms, lands directly on his ankle. It aches. But he's okay. It doesn't feel as though his ankle is broken, just badly bruised and caught underneath the rock. So he shuffles to move the rock away. Suddenly, gravel. A lot of gravel. It falls onto his feet, his legs, his torso, and the weight of it all forced the rock harder down onto his foot and locks it in place. Every time he tries to move, Yikes. more rubble falls, holding him tighter. He is stuck. 
This is Sand Cave. This man is Floyd Collins. Okay. He is trapped in absolute darkness. 60 feet deep below the earth. All of his limbs held in place at the very bottom of this. Okay, we got some color. We got some color and 3D animation. And we're going very story heavy, obviously. You got hour zero, so we've got a timeline going here with the video. But the whole thing's not going to be uh, black and white. All right, let's continue. January 30th, 10 a.m. Friday. All right. Oh, what did that say? The squeeze. Turn around room, okay? All right. It's kind of transitioning back where the camera's moving. Entrance. All right. But before I tell you what happens next, add time. Speaking of people trapped in a cave, World of Tanks. World of Tanks is not a game. Skip, 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 skip. All right. Collins is still in the dark, unable to move. He can feel the sharp crystals on the ground poking into his back. The ice melts above him, traces across the ceiling and drips directly onto his face. He oh, would shield man. himself against no the dripping. No way. You know those, there's people get tortured that way. You're just sitting there and then there's a drop just hitting your forehead. Man. Make you go insane. That his right arm is it. wedged against the roof of the cave and his left. So we're black back to black and white. So I'm not sure what that 3D part was for. If they purposely made it in color to kind of just make it different from the rest of the video, but I guess it's 3D, this is 2D, so I don't know, maybe. Is stuck in place underneath his torso. The cold water dripping onto him it's pools bubbles. underneath him. Floyd took slow, steady breaths in the concentrated dark. When he did attempt to shuffle, more gravel and rocks would tumble from above and pile onto his feet, so nothing would work. He raked his fingers against the wall until blood pooled underneath his nails, and he realized that there was only one option left. Call out for help. But wait, 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 wait. Who is Floyd, and why did he even go into a dangerous cave? Floyd started right. his caving career at the tender age of six. Growing up, exploring- Got some music going, some different music, and obviously, okay. I guess the actual story telling is black and white and and the the narrator obviously that scene uh, is obviously in color and so I guess that's what's making it different from the story and the actual narration. We got some map stuff going on here. But we got some music and yeah, pouring the caves of Kentucky was practically all he did. He would go off on his own, disappearing into the caves for many hours at a time. Have you seen that movie, The Descent? It was a lot like that. He grew up and he became embroiled in the Kentucky Cave Wars. Now, there's way too much to go into here, but the summary version is there's this huge network of interconnected caves called Mammoth Caves. It's actually the largest cave system in the world. Hmm. And there's a city right in the middle of it. Cave City. Real name. So, so, I'm still kind of confused about that 3D part that was in color. Because they made the movie black and white as well as the reference. Of course, there are dozens of cave entrances on private property all over the place. Now, farmland in this region has very poor soil and things do not grow well here. So, right. cave tourism as a source of income quickly became the prominent thing. However, a problem. There are a very large number of caves, but there are only a limited number of tourists. So competition rapidly escalated. Visit my cave. No, no, no. Visit my cave. Big signs were erected saying, ah, tourists, come to me. Ah, mine is definitely open. Mine is the best. Okay, so we got some mouth animation talking. Just, you know, simple looped stuff. 
over the mouths of the people. Uh, so yeah, this is very much so there's 2d images being, uh, moved around keyframes and stuff like that animation. And yeah, very, it is, I guess a simpler style, but there is a lot going on, even though it looks simple, I guess you could say, uh, like, Obviously, with this, you got the background, you got the cave. Uh, oh, check this out. So we got these people blurred out, right? So obviously, you had had, had to add a Gaussian blur there. You got this guy that is the main focus because the words are here. So you're looking at this side, and then they obviously have this animated in. And then you have the, hold up, background. Yeah, and scene. But then competitors would respond by saying, hey, by the way, we're open, but Try don't go to that one over there. In fact, it's dangerous. This kept going further. By the end, they were blocking off the trail to each other's property, beating each other in the streets, and hiring people called cappers who would dress up as policemen and tell tourists, no, 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 you can't go in there. That one, no, it's cappers. illegal. Despite the fierce competition, Floyd found a cave on his property and he started advertising it to tourists. Okay. Of course, very few came. All right, he thought. What if I found something really special and unique? Then surely people would have to come to my cave to see it. So he kept exploring and exploring until he found this hollow. They have different layers. So he kept exploring and exploring. Until he there's like different layers in it that's moving at different times to give it more depth in the image, which I'm seeing a lot in this. So something cool to note. He found this hollow. It was filled with big gypsum crystals. And when you were in there, it felt like a completely alien world, but it was barely accessible. This small tunnel is the only way in. He would need to dig for months to open it up to tourists, but he knew he could do it. Back to the competition. They knew the value of this cave. They knew the potential. They wanted it for themselves and they wanted Collins gone. A few months mm. prior, a group of five men showed up to his farm unannounced. Ah, hand over that lease, Floyd, they said. Floyd, of See, course, refused. Animation. So they turned to violence, Whoa. knocking him down and savaging the helpless man until Homer, Floyd's brother, came running out of the house with a shotgun. But Floyd was not deterred. He spent 12, that escalated quickly. 12 hours a day, every day, for months, clearing gravel and stone, chipping away at that passage. He would open it up to tourists, make his cave an incredible attraction, and make... So yeah, uh, a lot of this stuff, this probably took a lot of work. Because it seems like, unless they did it a different way, I may be wrong, but you have to cut out the arms and the different areas that you want to move and then animate it with keyframes, which there's a lot of this inside of this. So, I mean, I don't even want to know. Well, I kind of do want to know, but I don't, I don't know how long this even took because it probably took a while. So there's Floyd in the dark, yelling out for help, okay. yelling into the pitch black. After a while, his voice would give out and he would have to sleep to recuperate. Hour two? He would then wake Hour. sometime later, remember where he is and begin yelling okay. again for help. Here he So we're moving up the timeline up here in the top left. Uh, it's 4 p.m. on a Friday, January 30th, hour six. Moving quickly. It was hour zero for a little bit in this edit, at least. Remained in the dark for the next 23 hours. Wow. Quickly, you might wonder, how come no one's come for him after 23 hours? Well, Sand Cave resides on a 200 acre farm. There are several homes on this property with other families. One of them, of course, is... I believe from... This is the actual house. Hmm. I believe from what I've seen before, I'll have to see how it goes further in the video, but every time it cuts back to him 
all of the sound effects and ambience and stuff cut uh, from the actual story and then it picks back up because that's a part of the story. And so it just abruptly cuts. And I think that might be a way they're using it to keep someone watching a little bit because that gives you a new jump of something new, right? You see color and it abruptly stops. So that might be what they're doing here. It's Colin's house where Floyd's father, Lee, resides. Now, Lee and Floyd constantly get into fights about how to run things. Lee wants his son to concentrate on farming, and Floyd wants to concentrate on cave tourism. Okay. Arguments. Sorry, man, but I would take the farming. Would often get heated. And Lee was also a bit of a drunk. It was doubtful that he would even notice if his son Floyd was missing. Also not helping things, Floyd regularly lodged at two other homes on the farm. Interesting. So way when he didn't return to, to one host, uh -huh. they would presume that he was... Interesting in a good way. Uh, not a bad way. ...staying with the other. And, even worse still, he was known to occasionally sleep in the cave, doing stints of up to 30 hours in there without resurfacing. Regardless, around the 23-hour mark, a few locals started to suspect that, okay. hey, some... 30 hours in there without resurfacing. Regardless, around... Again, yeah, it cut abruptly all the sound and everything and then you see color I might be onto something here the 23 hour mark a few locals started to suspect that hey something might be wrong and they went to check up on him and here they spotted his jacket still hung up unusual they went deeper however there was only one person small enough to make it as far as the turnaround room this was a 17 year old jewel estes he refused to go into the squeeze, Intense but music if he on. yelled, Floyd would probably hear him. Floyd! And Collins yelled back. Yes, I'm here. Silence. Estes emerges from the cave. One day. Okay, we know he's trapped, and we know where he is. So, a whole troop of locals show up. Out of my way. Say a bunch of men who would confidently charge into the cave. But... Once they reach the final squeeze. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I was not expecting that for, for the style video this is right now. <laughs> not gonna lie. Nope. They would charge straight back out again, saying things like, There's no way any man could fit in there. Out of my way, they would say as they were heading in the reverse direction. So a few more hours passed. Word so they've got the leaves even moving on the tree while the time lapse is going like certain sections are moving you can see it would spread around cave city and the neighboring areas slowly a crowd formed outside sand cave 20 over in louisville floyd's 22 year old brother homer he gets a phone call ah uh, hello i see Ah, my brother. He's trapped in a cave. I'm on my way. Homer jumps on a coach and makes his Different way music. to Floyd's cave. Got some color. Homer struts up to the scene. He walks past the growing crowd of unhelpful onlookers and makes a beeline for the cave to save his brother. In he goes, well down the chute, through the narrowing passages, down on his hands and knees towards the turnaround room. We've got... Like a vignette around here, blurred out edges a little bit, at least over here it looks like. Focusing on the areas that they want you to focus on. And when he arrives, yeah. he does not hesitate. See, so like he's blurred. Uh, and then there's a lot of, I mean, it's a cave, so I guess you're going to get that no matter what. Uh, but there's light on the areas that they want to make you focus. Hesitate. <gasps> He squeezes into the hole, scrambles his way through to the ledge on the other side. He sees Floyd below and slides down to meet him. Okay. Floyd! Sup? All right, probably wasn't that casual. Oh, thank God. They did it again. That's what they're doing. Roger here. Homer took a moment to shine his light around the area and assess the situation. It was not good. 
This rock formation is going to prove almost impossible to work around. All right, so let's have a So yeah, the light is moving and the script is pretty good. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in how this ends, whether it's good or bad. I hope it's good. All right, so let's have a look. Floyd is here. The rock is here, pinning his ankle. He's surrounded by rubble, okay. and there's a pocket of gravel above him, ready to fall. However, because this opening is so small... So all the parts that... All the new assets that are being added have color to them, while the old ones have... are black and white, no color. There are only two viable ways of reaching Floyd and that gravel. Option one, the most obvious, feet first. But if you do this, okay. you have to kind of squat, and your own torso obstructs access to the rubble. Otherwise, option two, come down head first. That will Yikes. give you better access, but you're trying to move hundreds of pounds of gravel upside down. Worse yet, there's barely an inch around Collins on either side, so good luck getting your arm down near Floyd's ankle to actually free him from the wedged rock. Yeah. Homer whips around and yells, Quickly! Some food and drink! They send it through. But first, Homer gives Floyd a litre of coffee to warm him up. Coffee? After 38 hours of no water? I'm expecting, I mean, he's stuck. That's wild. Then, as many sausage sandwiches as he can stomach. Okay. He manages to down nine of them. Dietary advice has changed since the 1920s. Feeling better? Much better. Then Homer went to task. He began removing rocks and gravel, tiny scoop at a time, with the help of an old syrup can. I'm gonna guess that's the original. 40 For the next hours. eight hours he toiled, first with hands, then once enough was cleared, using a crowbar to scoop behind his brother, scraping away sharp protrusions as he went. Okay. It was slow process. So yeah, they're cutting away. There's different sections, and then wherever the crowbar goes, it's just they're moving it with it, obviously. Progress. Sweat. Virtually futile. While holding up his body weight with one arm, he would have to use the other to scoop away gravel. Then watch as new gravel would suddenly fall from above and undo all the work. Homer stayed for as long as he could, but after several hours, he was ragged. His teeth chattered uncontrollably, his lungs choked with dust, and the skin on his fingers shredded from the rubble. Yikes. However, something new. By the time Homer reached outside, he was surprised to see a mob of approximately a hundred men and women standing around, drinking, squabbling, and talking big game about how they too were going to save Floyd. The press was also present to help people gawk from afar. Homer shunned them all and rested up in a small tent in front of the cave. Strangers right. immediately... That is a little difficult to see, considering... In front of the cave. Because you're looking here, I guess you gotta look over here, and it's a bright area with the white text. Strangers immediately crowded around him to ask innocent, but frankly, frustrating questions and offer unsolicited, obvious advice, as well as wildly impractical solutions. Listen, People. listen, you just have to untie his shoes. Free the foot, free the man, right, fellas? No, 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 no. Let's hire a contortionist. We get a hammer and a chisel. We'll have him back by supper. A lot of these guys are drunk, by the way, so the discussions very quickly went from zero to 100. Hey, new idea. How about dynamite? We'll simply blow him out. One group formed, what? insisting it was a great idea. And another saying, no, 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 the explosion will kill him and the weight of the new rocks will surely crush him. They shouted at each other for a while until someone suggested, hey, how about gas torches? We can use acetylene torches to cut through the rock and make the hole bigger. No, 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 that'll cook him or the gas will fill the cave and kill everyone inside. No. They fought over that too. But by far the most common suggestion was to simply cut off the foot. Never mind that the foot itself was unreachable. 
And never mind that he'd lose so much blood, he might not make it back to the surface. And never minding yeah. even more that Floyd was strongly reluctant to the idea. Whatever you do, don't cut my foot off. Homer could have easily ignored. I would say the same. I mean, throughout this whole video, we got different moving assets and it's all just 2D, 2D stuff. Besides that one part. All of this pointless bickering, except that not one of them continue shoveling away the gravel. The formula was always the same. Bold, fearless men would strut into the cave with sandwiches and blankets, then reach the turnaround room and immediately lose their nerve, then dump it all outside of the hole, and then return back outside and go, Oh, absolutely. No, he says, thanks for the food. Thank you so much. Wow. Yum, yum. Now, no did one they, would go. Th did they eat it? Did they eat the food before they put everything else down? That's the real question. Through that squeeze. Dozens more men would try, all of them would fail. Wow. February 71 hours. Second, 9 a.m. So far, Homer has been the only Ten person moments. who has been face to face with Floyd. And that would continue to be true until... We got a different angle here, all right. I don't know if they've shown this angle before, but... Here we are Something at the new. Louisville Courier. There's a spirited young news hawk named William Miller. Okay. He's talking to his boss, and he's trying to convince him that it's a great idea for him to cover the story of the man trapped in the cave. He's stuck down there, and I want to get down there too. Get to the nitty gritty, you hear? This is an opportunity for some good PR, Miller. I'm in. But I want us to sponsor that rescue. Picture this. Man saved from cave by Louisville Courier. The finest newspaper in the state. Ah, that'll drum up plenty of interest. 24 carat idea, boss. I'll make it happen. So off Miller goes to Floyd's cave. Back over at the cave. Fade to black, indicating we're going into a new section. Homer is sitting outside trying to recuperate as Miller wanders up. Homer is not interested in giving an interview. He wants someone to help. So as Miller asks questions, eh? Homer tries his best to show contempt. Yeah. Sure. Frustrated, Homer bluntly says, Listen, you want more information? The hole's right behind me. Why don't you go take a look yourself? Miller thinks for a moment. Well then. Then says, Yeah, all right. He grabs a lantern and crouches down to enter the cave. All right. As he walked, cold water filled his shoes. He was stepping in newly formed puddles. That water is coming from the inside of the cave as the temperature okay. slowly increases and masked around certain areas showing moving water. Pretty much how I would guess you would achieve that. And the frost inside melts. The stable environment of the cave is starting to change. That is thanks in no small part to the growing crowd of gawkers. To stay warm, they were building fires and hanging around the entrance of the cave to shelter from the elements. But nonetheless, Miller presses on, and all okay. that's left is that final squeeze, and he's there. So they've shown this... And all that's left is... This same part, like as if they're going to go into the cave, uh, but different people on the side here. And then obviously throughout most of it, we got this asset in the top left just reminding you if you forgot uh, in detail the day, time, and uh, like day of the week, date, time, and day. Is that final squeeze and he's there. He stops. He takes a moment and decides to call out to Floyd. Floyd! Hearing there is someone on the other side. He feels ashamed not to try. Into the dark he went, through the nine-inch squeeze. Yeah. The crystal gypsum cuts into his elbows and tugs at his clothes. He gets snagged. He's spluttering through the pools of muddy water. He stops, collects himself, and pushes on. He can barely inhale. If he gets stuck in here, he can only hope that someone else can come in from behind is any of this animated? And pull them out by the legs. But if oh, I thought the water was animated. Terrible! 
Terrible. No, I'm just kidding. Eventually, he makes it through. Fantastic. He is now on his belly, looking down at Floyd. He sat right next to Floyd. So you're telling me this guy has only had coffee and some sausage in 72 hours? No water? Man, no water after coffee. That's crazy. Floyd, ready to interview him. But Floyd didn't really answer any of his questions. At the moment, he is sitting in a pool of water that is 12 degrees, slowly sapping his body temperature. He is dying from exposure. The cold is diminishing Floyd's mental faculties, and he can barely make sentences. There's nothing Miller can do, so he hurriedly turns around. He worked his way back through the squeeze, past the turnaround room, and out into the daylight. Homer turns to Miller. Proof that he had made it all the way to Floyd is soaked onto his mud-stained clothes. No longer frustrated with the young reporter, instead, he excitedly runs over to him. You and me! Together, we can get Floyd out of there. Now, there were two people who could help rescue Floyd. So the music actually is going here, but they're also showing the, the story here. So that might be why they're continuing the music and not cutting abruptly. Now, helping with the rescue oh, was not is. the only thing that Miller did for Floyd. Perhaps even more crucially, his reporting was responsible for turning Floyd into a nationwide story. Miller took interviews, relayed first-person accounts, and would spend many hours with Floyd himself in that cave. He gave an insight into the story that only a first-person account could, and in turn gave the public a figure who they would deeply relate to. So yeah, it's split up into sections that's cut out. I don't know where they got these photos from, but like these people, obviously the sound effect of people talking, ambience builds up more, the more people they add, but. And in turn, different gave the public a figure who they would deeply relate to. Updates to the story would be printed in over a thousand local and national newspapers. You couldn't escape it. It was also the era when radio became okay. a regular feature for regular Americans. Radio allowed some. They have this right here to indicate it's behind some glass. Something new. Hourly updates. Letting people get engrossed into the story. So, mostly thanks to Miller, the story of Floyd over the next week would grow and grow. And everybody wanted to know, will this man make it? Back outside the cave, someone new entered the story. Robert Burton. He would become the third man to reach Floyd. A firefighter from Louisville. Thin frame, but muscular. He got scratched up pretty good and soaked by the pooling water. But he made it through with little fuss, and he confidently lowered himself down to Floyd's position. It was not an optimistic sight. Floyd's condition was deteriorating. Well, we've got a heck of a problem here, but I think I can get you out with a rope. Floyd nods in approval. Go on. We might just pull your bloody leg off. Just pull my leg off then. Get me out of here. Hey. Burden returned to the surface and faced the crowd. At this point. He announced. We will attempt a rope pull. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea. You're just going to tear his foot off. Yeah, hold on. What about the sharp rocks? Raking through all that and there'll barely be a body left to bring to the surface. A physician stepped forward with authority. How's my man talking with this in his mouth? Not falling out. And there'll barely be a body left to bring to the surface. A physician stepped forward with authority. The ligaments in the foot are strong, but if you pull on the torso without a harness, all you'll likely do is tear his internal organs. I know there's a... Some kind of website or... Man, I forgot what it was. I seen it a long time ago. But it makes it to where you can... It animates like that. But if you pull off mouth movement, uh, clay type of movement for for talking over on the torso without a harness, all you'll likely do is tear his internal organs. But Floyd is dying of exposure down there. The situation is becoming desperate, 
Burden put caution to the... Imagine having to breathe. I mean, these guys were already tired of breathing in all of the dust and stuff down there. To be breathing in all of that dust after 75 hours, that's got to be... And only having coffee? Psh. Side. The time for strategy is over. Now we try brute force. Is it what? <laughs> okay. Is it the water drop? Oh, hey. Whoa. What's going on? Some kind of Floyd. Floyd. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought it was flashback. But I heard the hour changing to drops, and I thought it was gonna show the drops from the ceiling. I didn't realize a whole hand was gonna come out of the roof. I can't, uh, We're here. We're gonna get you out of here. After 79 hours in the cold water, he is delirious, fading in and out of consciousness. Okay. I'm gonna put the special harness around you. More of a vignette and out of focus to indicate that type of... Did it muffle? Consciousness. I'm there was a sound effect behind it that kind of... Gonna put the special harness around you. Burden and Miller, they're here too. We got three more boys right up the cave, and they're all ready to pull as hard as they can to get you out of here. Floyd was frightened. I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna hurt. No one knew quite how this would go. Nice. Floyd was given some food, some coffee, a large <laughs> More coffee? Man, more coffee, that's crazy. Almost 80 hours in two cups of coffee? I mean, they haven't mentioned any water, but... That's got to be a twig of whiskey and a sedative. That sedative would keep him calm if his ankle bone is snapped or the skin on his foot is peeled off. Ew. Okay. Floyd took the opportunity to appreciate. Good thing they didn't show that. Being surrounded by friends and family. Go on. Do it. All right. Strap him up. Homer attached a harness. He ties on the rope. Miller gives the signal. Ready! Burden gives the final all clear. Ready! Everybody braced for the tug of war. Cave versus man. The winner gets Floyd. Three. Two. Do it. One. Pull! The force of six okay. men pulled it's against- that subtle- Well, one, the music has gotten very much more dramatic. And it's cutting faster, uh, which indicates a more stressful situation, obviously more intense. So it's cutting faster between the people. And, you know, we got some animations of the rope stretching and then the sound effect behind this whole section. It's the clutches of the cave. Floyd began to scream. See, faster His body was being pulled up from the rubble. The gravel was beginning to shift. Burden's calls echo through the cave. Floyd screamed harder as well. All right, so Floyd is trapped laying down like this, but the pulling of the rope wrenches him up like this. His torso was being compressed and bent against the ceiling of the trap. Wow. It would kill him. Floyd's screaming intensified and through gasps was begging them to stop, but it did not stop. The agony continued on and on with no progress. Enough, enough, you guys are killing him. Homer quickly spun around and started pulling against the other men. He threw his legs onto the rocks and propelled himself backwards. One man versus five. I said stop! Wow. Coursing with adrenaline, he pulled the rope free from their clasp. Imagine one guy 
doing that to five other dudes. The tug of war was over. The cave had won. Floyd fell back down. Homer, Miller, Burden and the other three men were flat on their backs, panting for breath. The cave would not let this man go. The futility of the situation sank in, and all they could do was leave for now and rest. Outside, the number of spectators had increased to 200. They buzzed and asked useless questions, and Homer walked dejectedly past them. He sat by thinking what he could do. The cause seemed hopeless. Homer? Then, someone showed up who could turn things around. He looked up to see a childhood friend of both his and Floyd's, Johnny Gerald. He was just the man for the job. He was an experienced caver. The movements are very linear. It's not, I guess you would say, the movements aren't super pleasing to the eye as far as just, it doesn't seem that natural, like with the whole pan up in some of the zooms. Uh, it, it's like that for some of this video. But and he was an experienced style. cave trapped I mean, person rescuer. All right, let me go see him. Well, look who it is. Floyd perked up immediately. Yay. Thrilled to see Gerald. The sparkle from Floyd's gold tooth could be seen in his smile. All right, let's see what we can do. Gerald jumped down and then for the next three hours, Gerald went back to the original plan of digging away the rocks. His stamina was good, and progress was surprisingly good as well. For several more hours, he continued, just moving stone after stone. New one would fall in its place, and he'd move that one too. By midnight, he had enough room to shift position and clear some of the gravel that was at each side of Floyd's body. Gerald would spend several more hours scooping, and it worked. Slowly, more and more of Floyd's body was coming free. Some blurred edges focusing on the parts that he's removing. I see. From the rubble, the lower shoulders, his chest, even his hips and thighs. It was incredible progress, but Gerald wasn't done yet. He kept going until practically all of the rubble, except a few harder to reach piles down by his legs, okay. remained. The relief from the weight made it significantly easier for Floyd to breathe and flex his limbs. Sound effects. And Over stuff. the course of those few hours, Gerald managed to scoop away more than a thousand pounds of the music. Subtly, you can hear it's definitely gotten less ambient. Uh, there, there's more rhythm to breathe music, but there was still a lot more to go. And that rock by Floyd's foot was still holding him in place. By 2 a.m., Gerald was spent. He needed rest, and he was ready to head back outside. Floyd, tomorrow you're gonna be a free man. Now here you might think that things will become straightforward. 96 hours with two cups of coffee. That's the only stuff they mentioned, or he mentioned. So, maybe, I mean, if they were giving him coffee, they probably brought water and stuff down there, but that's the only stuff they mentioned. He mentioned them, yeah. They did not. Now I that that imagine. space had been cleared, Burden became convinced that if he could get down that passage again, he could free Floyd with another rope pull. Fate deciding, with both feet or just one, so Burden marches up to the cave once again, but when he tried to enter, they shoved him in the other direction. The crowd was acting as a sort of phalanx, and anyone who tried to get in was told to get lost. They had been specifically instructed to not let anyone in, and they were especially opposed to Burden making another rope pull after word spread about the disaster of the first attempt. He tried to reason with them. Let me try the rope pull again, it'll work this time. But they would not hear it. Oof! I see some, uh... Again, yeah, it'll work this time. But they would not. Shadows here and there. They'll add behind people and stuff, but only sometimes I've seen it. Not hear it. Oof. Of the three other people who could reach him... G uh, transition. Gerald and Homer are out exhausted and sick, 
which leaves only Miller, who is tied up with work. With Burden barred from entering, Floyd was left on his own, wondering why it was that no one would visit him. Hello? Is anyone there? Help. Hey. 100? Anyone wow. There? Now, obviously, the work camera fading back. He's saying help, uh, asking for people, and then slowly fading away. Miller was doing was handing over reports to his boss about Sand Cave. Those reports would be fed through the news grapevine to the Associated Press, and the Associated Press would send that out to its very large affiliate network. Press. Is that like a, and the Asso a PNG? Associated Press. You get the lines for the. Would send that out to its very large affiliate network. Watermark. The stuff. word was spreading about Floyd. By afternoon, Miller was done with his work and he hurried back to the cave. So he gets inside and. Whoa. Huh. His eyes didn't have to work half as hard to adjust to the dark. Yeah, I guess that was a good edit. Because it was super bright. Uh, indicating what they just said. His eyes adjusting. That was pretty good. Someone had installed electric lights from the entrance right all the way down to Floyd. Hmm. Miller popped down to the lower level. Ah, Floyd! Fancy seeing you here, buddy! When Miller reached Floyd, he took the final bulb and attached it to his collar to keep him warm. Then, reusing that syrup tin, Smart. he started offloading gravel into buckets. Those buckets were then passed up. So now they got glowing. He started offloading gravel into buckets. And I just buckets. realized, Those I didn't think about this, but that's the, now this is the only part that is color in the black and white. It actually looks pretty good. I like that decision. Making it the only part that's color really makes it different from the scene. Past highlighting it. And down the cabin, like an assembly line. And so it went on for the next few hours. Until he was too tired and needed to rest. Miller then took some time to have a bit of a one on one with Floyd. He said, you know, there are a lot of people in the news that are reading about you and have you in their prayers. Is there anything you want me to relay to them? Floyd had been in... Was that a mess up or was that on purpose? He said... Because there's black bars here. You know, there are a lot of people in the news that are reading about... And then there's not. ...about you and have you in their prayers. Is there anything you want me to relay to them? Floyd had been in that cave for over 100 hours now, and seeing everyone working together, Floyd was overcome with a sense of hope and relief. Floyd wanted to pass on a message. Here is what he is quoted in the newspaper. I believed I would go to heaven. I can feel that I'm to be taken out alive and with both my feet. I kept thinking, what would happen if the rock above me would fall? It caused me to shudder. I kept thinking to drive my mind to something else, but it wasn't much use. I couldn't do much to help those who came to help me, but I knew that a lot of people were willing to do all in their power. Got like a, obviously showing the quote of what he's saying, and there's like an echo-ish type of effect over it. It gave me courage. Tuesday morning, I thought to myself, Four days down here, and no nearer freedom than I was on the first day. How will it end? Will I get out? I couldn't think of it. I have faced death before. It doesn't frighten me, but it is so long. Tell them I am not going to give up. Tell them I am going to fight and be patient and never forget them. Hey. Meanwhile, news of the incident kept growing. The entire country was captivated by Floyd's story. Crowd There he is again! The incident kept growing. The entire country was captivated. PNG, watermark man. Captivated by Floyd's story. Crowds huddled around newspaper stands each morning and afternoon, waiting to get any new drips of information. It became a water cooler topic. Did you catch the latest episode of Game of Caves? He had the prayer power of practically every church in the county. Even the upper echelons of government were keeping tabs on Floyd. 
Congress halted session to get their little updates, and even the president, Calvin Coolidge, took a glancing interest. By mm. the end, the Floyd Collins incident would explode into the third largest non-political story between World War I... Okay, so 1918 to 1939. ...and World War II. All of this excitement brought an inundation of people to Cave City. Old population, 690. Yawn. New population, 10,000. The bank vaults ran empty as people withdrew cash to spend around town. But they wouldn't have much to spend it on because restaurants didn't even have enough stock to feed all the new... Is that Minecraft sound effects? ...customers. Practically every hotel room in the county was taken, so residents capitalized with a 1920s version of Airbnb and charged outrageous fees hey. to offer places to sleep on their bedroom floor or in mattress-lined bathtubs. And 4,500 automobiles impatiently sat, backed up for two miles from 20 different states to drive onto the Collins Farm, churning up all the pristine green fields with their tires and turning them into brown muck. Paddocks. Talk about traffic. Deep all those tourists. There's Miller. Okay! Muck paddocks. Deep low all those tourists. All right, we got some, we got a transition here. Going there. beneath the ground. There's Miller, trying to free Floyd. I'm gonna guess it was just an asset that they had to move over. And there was some motion blur to it. Because it was blurred, if you couldn't tell, a little bit while it was moving. So, I mean, that was pretty good. All right, a little I bit did. of setup. Floyd, Miller, some remaining rubble, rock. For anyone to lift the rock by hand would be impossible because Floyd's body obstructs the hole. Miller okay. grabs a crowbar and shoves it through the gap. Now he's going to lever it off Floyd's foot. Cool. The crowbar is now pro- yeah. Now he's going to lever it off Floyd's foot. All right. So you cuss like that. If you can tell or if you notice, a and I, shoves it through. I'm going to expect that they did it on purpose, the now but it's in the general area of the scene that it cut to. So your eyes aren't going all over the screen. So it's your eyes are more comfortable while watching the video uh, when it comes to cuts like that. Lever it off Floyd's See? foot. Boom, Co right there. Oh, the crowbar is now primed in place. Next, he takes a jack. He positions it on top of the crowbar so that it will be forced against the ceiling. However, problem. That jack is too big. It doesn't fit. Miller yells up the tunnel for a smaller one, but this took some time. And when it arrived, too small. Won't reach the ceiling. But instead of sending for another one, Miller takes two blocks of wood and bolsters them underneath the crowbar. Right, so the crowbar now sits higher, it fulcrums against the blocks, and the jack is sitting on top. All Miller has to do is expand the jack, which he will do using this spanner, holding it at the very tips of his fingers. Sounds easy. It's not. But that's the plan. Let's get him out of there. He turned the wrench. The jack expanded. And the crowbar oh, took no. strain. The whole thing slid apart with a pang. Floyd wasn't hurt, but Miller was contorting and exerting his whole body from back to fingertip. They tried again. Same result. Undeterred, Miller caught his breath and gave it a... See, so you got... I don't know what's supposed to be in focus here. But you can see the glowing in the background. There's some color throughout this. Another shot. He slowly turned... There's more color. I guess, yeah. If there's a light... The jack. Pressure building. And this time, Miller could feel the rock move. It bloody moved. He kept turning the wrench and the rock moved a little more. His hands were shaking. Knees weak. His arms are heavy. Pang. One of the wood blocks flew out. It all scattered apart. The rock painfully slammed back down on Colin's foot. Ah, you'll get it next time, Miller. Try again. Thanks. Miller kept on trying. Countless attempts. He kept pushing himself deeper into the trap, finding new approaches. Damn the blocks. No, try the blocks again. Clear some more rubble. Floyd, unable to help physically, is supporting him in spirit at least, cheering him on. And Miller kept going and going and going until he had nothing left. 
For the next four hours, he tried. No progress. Miller was exhausted. He couldn't do this on his own, but he was the only one slim enough to get in through the gap. The group decided to concede. Now the music is back to being more ambient. Uh, I guess focusing more on the just the situation that's going on here. For now, and return to the surface. They would take just a small break, but it looked to everyone like there was a clear way to get this man out. So Miller and Burden crawl back through the mud and the winds of the cave. As they made their way through, the cave was visibly sagging. The ceiling seemed lower. Parts were harder to navigate than before, doubly so with their bruised and rock-shredded hands. And then, yeah, this is still changing throughout uh, the hour count and all this. They stepped outside and took in the fresh country air. But as their eyes adjusted to the light, they saw something new. A man named Henry Carmichael was standing in front of a sizable crowd of engineers and hard hats and soldiers in military uniform. Now Henry is the superintendent of the Kentucky Rock Asphalt Company. The engineers are his employees and the men in military garb are the National Guard. Now, Carmichael has been quietly looking at the situation from afar. Get it, and, you know, he's far away and they have it highlighted. <laughs> Because indicating that he's far away, they got some people here closer to the camera. You got him smaller. And he is thoroughly unimpressed. Shadow, this is shot. no rescue operation. Once Miller and co. call it quits, Carmichael had two of his employees do a proper survey of the cave and see if it was suitable to bring in his whole team of men. The two surveyors go in. As the passage led down to Floyd, it was showing alarming signs of deterioration. You could see the splitting of the rock above. Boards were slipping out of place or splintering. Small rocks tumbled down the walls. They soon came back with a report. It was not good. All right, so the following is a recounting of events from one of Carmichael's men, Casey Jones. <clears throat> Casey and another worker spent about an hour in the cave, surveying its condition, looking at the boards, the ceiling, the stability of the walls. Again, more shadows. Um, you know, you got some stuff falling. Casey continued deeper towards Floyd. He was fighting against his nerves. The shifting of the rock pinged his every instinct to flee. But he could hear Floyd calling out for help in the distance. Summoning all of his courage, he pushed himself on through the final squeeze and over the ledge that looked down on blink effect mask blinking before he goes through into the next scene Floyd rubble continued to drop from the ceiling bouncing all around him. the ceiling felt closer to him than it was before but maybe that was just the dark playing tricks please come down uh, I can't right now, Floyd, but I will when I get back. Now, Casey is being pulled in. Huh. So they quoted that. So I wonder if that has any importance or if it's important to the story. Two directions. No, come back. Come on. Let's get out of here already. Please. I'm so thirsty. Okay. Casey climbed down. If he gets more coffee... Down next to Floyd. Quick, drink, said Casey as he tried to pour some coffee into Floyd. Man, so these people just lived off, they just lived off coffee. 114 days, that's wild. Floyd's mouth. But Floyd turned his head and kept his lips pursed. The rocks were falling at a faster rate now. The loud cracking out above, sounding like thunder. In that moment, Casey realized what was happening. Floyd was not really asking for a drink. Floyd knew that a cave-in was inevitable. Scared and approaching his fifth day trapped, he was completely at his wit's end. He knew he was about to be trapped in that cave, and he didn't want to be trapped alone. Casey, come on, you're gonna get us killed. Stay with me, please, don't leave. Casey quickly turned away and scrambled back up the ledge. 
He made his way back through the final squeeze, his limbs scrambling against the cave walls. It seemed as if everything around him was shrinking. Wow. He made it out, and he joined his co-worker. They both turned around and watched on in horror as the yellow of the bowl was being swallowed by the dark. Rubble fell fast and heavy until no light could be seen at all. Rocks blocked out Floyd's panicked cries. The one route to Floyd was... So this is falling through the... It's now sealed. Some assets like fade in and fade in certain areas and then others others have movement like these rocks but the other rocks behind it faded in build shot which is interesting a tomb of rock and dust 115 it's morning burden and miller jump out of their tents Whoa. ready for the day they're feeling optimistic. Today will be the day that they get Floyd out of there. And they're packing some new tools to help them with the job. Wire to wrap around the wooden blocks, that'll stop them from slipping. And a blowtorch to carve away some of the rock, you know, make the hole a bit bigger. But when Miller got to the turnaround room, all of that optimism left him. The entrance to the squeeze was now just a pile of debris. Miller froze, staring at it for a long while. Then he sighed and did the only thing he could think. Make an opening through that rubble. But the more he raked away, the more fell in its place. It was never ending. He persisted, ignoring the danger around him. Thud. Interesting. He persisted, ignoring the danger around him. So this is focused up in the corner. As if this is obviously the rock that he went to the... Uh, Focus in. As soon as it hits the ground, obviously he says bang and then it cuts over. Thud. Yeah. A large piece of debris landed on him. Luckily, it was oh. only dried clay. He is uninjured. But recognizing the danger, Miller returned to the surface. Fifteen minutes later, he emerged from the cave with a bloodied up nose and bruises down his back and shoulders. Burden caught sight and races over to him. Miller just says, don't let anyone go back in there. Miller leaves the site. Burden doesn't know what to do. Over at the house, Homer is terribly ill and out of action. And that just leaves Gerald. Now he comes marching up when he... There's a lot of ambience in the background throughout the whole thing, whether it's birds or just in general. I guess that's the storytelling style they're going for here. And obviously we got a impact intense kick to the next thing he hears the news and he is livid he told Another the crowds way? to keep away or the whole thing would cave in and they didn't listen then exactly that thing happened and what were they supposed to do now the rest of the day was spent squabbling and bickering over who was to blame you caused the cave in no you caused the cave in and floyd spent the rest of that day alone So is that sound effect, is that sound effect like water drops or is it just, because that's what I'm assuming. I mean, yeah. The surveyors continued checking the cave throughout the day. At 6 p.m., Carmichael had ordered everyone to an assembly. Gerald took the floor. He was going to give this one last shot. Gerald addressed the crowd. Listen up. There's death down there. The walls and ceilings are crumbling. Unless you're determined to take the biggest chance you ever took in your life, tell me now and stay outside. Next, they told all the Gorkas to clear off. And so, Gerald went in and out of that cave half a dozen times, working away at the rubble, blocking access to floor. Leaving. Intense music is building up, indicating something's gonna be a happening. Or, I guess we'll see. Only when he suspected another cave-in, or to get food and water. Men on the sidelines were supplying new timber. Water. So he gets water, but the other guy gets coffee. Come on. A group of men helped Gerald to prop up the ceiling and guard against further collapse. 
Gerald toiled away at the pile, eager to reach his friend. He worked steadily, mindful of the danger poised right above him. Bit by bit, he reduced that pile until a light. He called out, yelling updates through the hole. Bad news! We can't reach you, but hold on! We're coming! Gerald continued. The pile got smaller still. The gap was large enough now that Gerald thought he might be able to fit. Okay, that's enough. Floyd, I'm going for now, but when I get back, I'm going to get you out of there. Gerald scrambled back out the cave, over to the men, and through panted breaths he said, Gather the equipment, and in an hour's time, it's going to be me and Floyd coming out of that cave. So yeah, it's Gerald be entered Sam Cave for his final time. The walls had been reinforced, but mud and water was accumulating everywhere. He waded through it and pressed on past the danger hmm. of the... Interesting. Usually there's more detail in the person that's crawling, but with this, it's just all black. I wonder if that's just an indication of how dark it is or they just decided to do that. Sagging ceiling. With determination on his face and a grease gun clutched in his right hand, he scrambled towards Floyd. But before the final squeeze, he stopped. It was all gone. Another cave-in, even worse than the first. He thought about how he could have been on the other side of that rubble. His mind raced, weighing out what to do. He shouted, Floyd! As a not-so-subtle reminder of the danger he was in, a rock fell from the ceiling. See, so that looks more 3D. As a not-so-subtle reminder of the danger than the other images. Like, certain images look more 3D than other the ones. He was in. A rock fell from... clearly 2D. And then, obviously, animation out. You got a little section here from where it fell. With the shadow. The ceiling. And cracked Gerald across the head. Luckily, just a small one. Woo! He felt around for blood and kept shouting. Floyd! He could definitely hear a voice. But it was faint. Gerald was scared that this was Floyd's last shot at rescue, and he threw himself against the pile and pulled it away with finger and nail, launching the debris behind him with force, tearing at the pile like a man on fire. Dust bellowed, rocks flew, and he kept shouting out for Floyd as he went. Floyd! Until finally, the cave had had enough. It let loose a large, jagged rock aimed straight at Gerald, striking him on his back. Gerald stumbled out of that cave, Man. injured and defeated. It's a nice after sound effect. And then they use it to go into this. The cavens, did they start to think about all of the things that they could have done? Wait, why didn't we rig a portable telephone line? That would have been incredibly simple here in 1925. Yeah, why have we been running in and out to deliver updates? Why didn't we give him an AM radio? He could have had something to listen to and receive messages of support from the public. Wait, why don't we rig up a tarpaulin so we could lift his torso up so he wouldn't be slowly dying of exposure? Why didn't we run a feeding tube? That's also a technology we have in 1925. All too late. Now what? The one route to get to Floyd is closed forever. That meant two options. Number one, Capitulation. Surrender him to the cave. Well, number two. Dig down from directly above Floyd. Now, the prospect of digging from above seemed almost fanciful. At least it did in the beginning. But luckily, they had some help. Owing to Miller's reporting, Floyd had become practically the most famous person in the country. The rescue had become a high priority for the governor of Kentucky. Lieutenant General Denhart enters the scene. He's been updated on the situation, and following shortly behind him is a small army of miners and engineers. He declared to the despondent crowd, Gentlemen, I am here on behalf of the governor. The purse strings of Kentucky are open. It's interesting. So most of the time in other 
areas, there would be a different voice indicating the person talking, but he's talking for the person here. When Take do do this that? blank check and bring that man out alive. Floyd in that cold, wet confine could not have imagined the scale of the operation that was going on. So same transition as before, and then faster music going on. 55 feet above him. Authorities assumed control of Colin's rescue. Dinhart gave Carmichael control over the site, and Carmichael raced to get to work. Carmichael rallied up his men his fleet of expensive high-tech machinery. Professional groups were brought in from all across the state. No longer was this the ad hoc effort of a few individuals. It was a professional and organized rescue. No more squabbling and standing around. Everyone knew what they had to do and they were working as fast as they could. But just as hopes were rising, they were once again dashed against the rocks. They had all of this state-of-the-art machinery shipped in and assembled by the engineers and rearing to go. And it was all worthless. See, the problem is the cave drew air into it. These diesel-powered engines pumped out enormous volumes okay. of choking exhaust. Within a day's operation, the cave would be filled with carbon monoxide and Floyd would be dead from asphyxiation. Yikes. But we got a side example here of the actual cave of what's going on just as quickly as solutions would arise the cave would parry them away it refused to let this man go this useless machinery was now blocking the path to floyd which means they would have to spend the next couple of hours disassembling all of it and moving it away because they're about to dig a 55-foot pit the old-fashioned way, by hand. Psst. Okay, on. so they use the digging sound effects for... They keep on switching up the sound effects for the, for the hour count. Carmichael's expertise was in quarries. But the principles transferred over to caving and digging holes. He did some quick back of the envelope math. I've got 75 men. They can dig at two feet per hour and we have to go 55 feet deep. That means we can get to those men in roughly 30 hours, give or take. Now, is it possible that Floyd could survive? 30 more hours on top of that? Man. For another 30 hours? Abs That's what I just said. Absolutely. Let's go. Four men started at great pace. The soil was Taking soft up and pace. easy to dig. But as they got deeper, it became more difficult. The deeper the shaft, the narrower it became. Soon. Asset right here, showing how, how far they've gone below. Instead of four men, they could only fit two. Carmichael understood well that this was a race against time. So it was important that these two men were working at full capacity. Carmichael had a queue of men on the sidelines, poised to dig. And the moment that either of the two men in the hole slowed down, oi, they pulled them out and threw in a new one. Nonetheless, progress slowed the deeper they went. About a quarter of the way down, they reached rock, and one of the men would have to work a pickaxe, leaving only one to shovel. At this depth, Rubble couldn't just be flung into a pile. They had to start loading it into buckets, which would have to be pulled to the surface on ropes. Then men outside were ready with wheelbarrows to cart that downfield. Time passed. So they're showing references. They fade into the... So I notice whenever they show like images and some assets, they'll remove the black bars here. Hours passed. See, so they're back. Night went to day. The day was hot. This was yet another problem. Because it's early February, there's tons of ice still in the ground, and its exposure to the midday sun was causing it to become unstable. And the ground was becoming sodden as a result. Progress slowed once again. Just half a foot per hour. 
There was little for Colin's friends and family to do but watch the clock and pray. Interestingly though, there were a lot of people on the sidelines. Floyd wouldn't have believed the scene above him. Practically everything but a Ferris wheel. Food stalls were set up to cash in on... What? Balloon dart. You got axe throwing. Handlebar mustache. Wow. Practically everything but a Ferris wheel. Food stalls were set up to so. cash in on the crowds. Families and church groups picnicked in the fields. Despite prohibition, moonshiners showed up to sell drugs with all of those X's written on them. There was even a bloody juggler. I won't stop juggling till he's free. And old man Lee was there, walking around, shaking his jar, and soliciting donations. But where were Homer and Burden and Miller during all of this? Okay, let's back up a bit. People did not properly understand exactly how Floyd was trapped, and the news didn't help much either. So the obvious question started to arise. Why hasn't he been rescued yet? I was waiting for him. I was wondering, because he's said a few statements or questions, and I was wondering why they didn't show the, the words yet, because usually you want to show the words whenever something important is said as far as like a question or stuff like that. And so I guess they finally did. Just clear some gravel or pull a rope. How is this so hard? Motive was attributed. I heard they didn't even want to have him rescued at all. I heard that they're doing all of this for publicity. And Lee's activity of soliciting donations, remember from before, further inflamed rumors. I bet Floyd oh, isn't even trapped in there. These were all real rumors and they got worse. You know what? I've heard he comes out at night and then he just goes back in in the morning. Other rumors included, I heard that after Floyd went into the cave, someone murdered him. Others said, I think they're withholding food and water from him so he dies. This whole thing is a fraud. As time went on, it was harder. Well, apparently they're only giving him coffee, so I guess you're right about the water part, but. And harder to ignore the hope. Is that? This, this whole is thing a, is a fraud. This image is doubled everywhere. <laughs> As time went on. See, what is going on? It was harder and harder to ignore I've the seen hoax. That, like, the whole video. Claims. Then, people started to form righteous mobs, claiming the whole thing was a fraud, and they started to get nasty. In fact, two people even went to the telegraph office and pretended to be Floyd sending telegrams to his mother, who, by the way, died several years ago. Here's what it said. Quote, please contradict statements that I am buried alive in Sand Cave. Stop. Tell mother I am all right. Stop. Am coming home. Stop. Floyd Collins. Naturally, the AP published these telegrams unquestioningly, and now word is out to the press. Yeah, I don't know. Some... It's an interesting style, but just some of the movements just seem a little bit not pleasing to the eye, if that makes sense. That he isn't actually in the cave after all. See, like, that was all right. I mean, I think, was there a motion blur that? Way. And now word is out to the press Let's that see. he isn't actually... Let's see, go back. Our word Come is on. out to the press that he, he isn't... Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. It's just not there for everything. And actually in the cave... It would be easier to watch if there was more motion blur or just the movements in general after all some of the things that made the authorities look foolish and it could not go on so a hasty court martial was arranged and homer miller and gerald were summoned they hold one session on monday and another on tuesday okay lee and everyone else is cleared of charges a retraction is written and things carry on the men at the dig were 228 hours were busy as ever. They set up pumps to mitigate the water in the shaft. Men continued working in shifts and carrying away the earth. Here they are with strips of lumber to shore up the walls. Okay, yeah. So, showing again a reference and black bars are gone. They were just short of halfway. 
and their rate of clearing material had slowed to a mere four inches per hour. It was at that point Carmichael went, yeah, okay, sod the cavers, try the dynamite. But it hardly... Whoa! That escalated. ...made a dent, and it risked causing the shaft to collapse. But despite all of these challenges, there was an optimism in the air, because everyone was keen for their turn to dig. And because they had one more thing to latch onto. He is probably still alive. Now, how do they know that? Okay, so remember that light bulb around Floyd's neck? Well, it's powered by a simple copper wire. Bare copper wire is subject to very minute fluctuations in resistance. So, an engineer rigs up a radio amplifier to this wire to read the current and see those small fluctuations. There they were. Hmm. About 20 Okay, we got a, a new type of animation here with the thing. 228 hours. That's a minute. The rate of steady breathing. As his chest expands and contracts, they can read it from this device. And so, they kept going. Music is picking up again. Uh, and then, yeah, they're using... They're using sound effects to their advantage, just everything. And what? going. And going. 30 hours was the original estimate. Now 144 hours had come and gone, and they were only at 44 feet. Um, how then in the world is this man? Wow. Rain fell. Rain that mixed with dirt to make mud much of which then froze to make ice. Ice which expanded and damaged the integrity of the shaft walls. Slowing down with every hour, they continued. What? Many more hours passed and they were getting- And this guy's only had coffee. Close. But it was now 15 days since Floyd was first stuck in that cave and people had mostly lost hope. That excitement in the newspapers was tempering down. Visitors began clearing out from Cave City. Many still held on to hope, but their final lifeline, that light bulb, had burnt out. And it wasn't possible to do any more readings on the radio amplifier without it. No one knew. See, so they played a sound effect of it being, you know, lights out instead of burnt out, all that kind of... Just, they're playing sound effects to go with the storytelling of, of what's going on if Floyd was still alive. For another wow. 51 hours would pass before finally they reached the 60 foot depth. I'm in, chisel. A chisel is handed down at 1.30 p.m. on Monday, February 16th. Sand Cave would open once again. Floyd had been pinned in that cave for 17 days. 12. 17 days. I'm not going to make the joke. All right. <laughs> I know you're waiting for it. Ulf spent without food. Survivable. 12 without water. Likely not survivable. Okay. 12 without water. I guess they did. Give him some water. The light bulb, a vital source of warmth, burned out four days ago. But maybe the moisture from the dripping of the cave walls provided him with some sustenance? There are stories of people surviving harsher extremes. A few final rocks were moved to allow Ed Brenner to squeeze in. Everybody stood by, absolutely silent, peering into that hole. Ed scanned the opening with his flashlight, listening carefully for movement. Then, head first, he worked his way in. The flashlight reflected dimly off the rock walls, but then caught the reflection of something gold. That golden flicker tooth. was not the light bulb. It was the glistening of light reflecting off I knew a it. gold tooth. His mouth hung open. Oh. Floyd was dead. Brenner was helped out of the cave and he delivered the news. 
dead. Well then. A coroner would later state that Floyd succumbed to exposure and that they had missed him by just three days. About the same time that the light bulb had gone out. When the light bulb went out, so too did his one source of warmth. If it had held out, Man. Collins might have as well. But what would they do now with the body? The shaft walls were ready to fall inwards, and risking lives to remove a corpse was seen as just irresponsible. So it was decided by the authorities. Floyd will stay in that cave. He's still there? Is that what he's about to say? Now, this did not sit well with the family. So the, I think I've heard that multiple, the sound effect of like a riser before it cuts into a different thing. I think I've heard that at different moments. But what could they do? The next day, they planned the funeral. The town some, emptied of people. And okay. the shaft. Got some side next day, sides. they planned the funeral. The t okay. town emptied of people. And the shaft, with Floyd at the bottom, was filled back in. But that's not quite the end of the story. But if you hung on for this long, keep holding on, because things are going to continue to get interesting. But first, let me do a wrap-up. This dude's eyebrows just went off his face. I guess it's going to get more interesting. Where everyone is and all that stuff. Context, context. The Collins family already had financial hardship. Lee Collins wasn't able to raise much money from the donations. After the crowds cleared, he was seen searching the site, scanning for empty bottles that he could resell. But the owner of the land, B. This guy likes his money, I guess. B. Doyle, and supposed friend of Floyd, was wholly unsympathetic. He put up a sign that said, Floyd's dead body, right this way. What? Come on now, take a look. Only 50 cents a gander. It's 100 years later, B's dead. Let's call it even. Also, Remember those claims of Kentucky being an open purse? Well, the state reneged on the deal. They refused to pay many of the rescuers, and most of them went home without the promised pay, many having sacrificed a week's worth of wages from missing their regular work. Some of them did make some money out of the situation, though. They signed on to a type of touring theatre called Vaudeville. They roamed the country, telling their personal stories of their attempted rescue. Miller received the best offer out of anyone, however. How about 50 grand to do the Chautauqua lecture circuit? It'll be worth nearly a million dollars in 2023 money. Well then. He declined. He stayed loyal hey. to the Louisville Courier, continuing his work there for several more years. Although, a bit of a perk, he won the 1926 Pulitzer Prize for his reporting on Floyd Collins. The 1926 Pulitzer Prize for there. his reporting. Animation up, focused on him, obviously. And on Floyd. And Pol then add the blur focus here. Hold up. He How the 1926 is... Pulitzer Prize for this. his report. So this is out of focus, and then the background is out of focus, but he's in focus. Okay, makes sense. Reporting on Floyd Collins. But now the background's in focus, but he's out of focus because there's supposed to be depth to this. Interesting. Okay, so back to the brother, Homer. He needed money and he agreed to do that vaudeville circuit. He stood on stage and shared with the crowd stories about growing up with his brother, Floyd, and detailing out the tragedy. There's random stuff that's like in focus here but everything else is out of focus i don't know i don't i wonder if they uh but homer made it known why he was up here on stage trying to get money he had a mission i kept thinking of floyd lying in the muck where he had suffered beyond our power to imagine i would never have peace of mind if he remained there he wanted the money to dig floyd up and get him out of that cave a couple of months later he had it all right, so back to Floyd. April 17th, 1925. Homer and a team of excavators. They began to dig. Within a week, they had arrived at Floyd. 
But instead of coming down the same passage near Floyd's head, they approached from the other side where his foot was. It allowed them to remove the rock that trapped him in place. They lifted him up from his tomb and laid him down on the fresh air above. A couple of days later, Floyd was given an honored place at the family cemetery next to his mother. A stalagmite was taken from Sand Cave, carved with his name and used as a headstone. And there he lay. For no, that's not actually where it ends. Okay, this is where it gets weird. Two huh? years later, 1927, the Collins family's finances hadn't much improved. A dentist, Harry B. Thomas, walked up to the property and made Lee an offer. Sell this property to me and I will give you $10,000. Now, Homer begged him not to because at the time, the government was starting to buy up tons of land in the area and turn it into national parks. They had to pay at a very competitive rate. But Lee was becoming a bit old and senile by this point. Shaking. And frankly, it's doubtful that he cared about Homer or Floyd or anyone else for that matter. It's 100 years later, he's dead now. Let's call it even. So, the point is, in this land sale with Thomas, Lee agreed to a very odd clause. And that clause said, everything on that property belongs to Thomas. And should he wish, for example, to exhume a dead body and re-embalm it and put it on display in something really tacky like a, I don't know, a glass coffin inside a cave, maybe, what? then that would be his prerogative. Lee signed, yes. And Thomas did exactly that. Doyle made Floyd's corpse a tourist attraction. That's right. Two bits Whoa. of gander come and wonder at the incredible dead man who died in a cave. But to add insult to injury, it worked. That's crazy. Visitors returned to Sand Cave to gawk morbidly at Floyd. Within a few months, Thomas had turned Lee's failing farm into a successful business. The Collins family, naturally, is appalled by the situation, and they immediately object. Hey. They try a number of times to get Floyd returned to them, including through the legal system. But it's a lot of different scenes. I, I mean, I'll give them that. There is a lot of different scenes. I don't know how long this video took to make, but there's a lot of different stuff they oh, work with. Because, obviously, they're behind these. You can see his foot behind the railing here same thing with them and so yeah there's a lot of different assets and in, in parts incredibly the judge ruled in thomas's favor and so there he lay for the next two years what happened after that the cave was not done with floyd Oh, until someone hatched a plan. Two years later, it's midnight outside Sand Cave. Footsteps can be heard rustling through the brush. Now, we don't know who these two men are, but we know why they are here. To rob a grave. They sneak inside and clamber over the rocks in the darkness. People, man. Well, actually, is this... Reaching yeah, Floyd's casket, they undo the latch and throw open the lid. Whoa. There is his shriveled body. All they right. throw him in a gunny sack and they race off into the night. For 800 yards they carry dear Floyd like a couple of sweaty Santas about to deliver a really terrible Christmas present. Panting, out of breath, knowing that they're going to get caught any minute, they reach the Kentucky Green River hillside. There's no time with a one two three they launch his body towards the river and floyd goes sailing into the air up up into the starlit beyond and What's landing in a bush oh hey. god <laughs> the two men flee from the, the scene that's wild now the next morning Thomas notices that the body of Floyd is somewhat missing, and he contacts the authorities. The police come, they dust the casket for fingerprints, and bloodhounds are given Floyd's scent and let loose into the hillside. A few hours later, they manage to find him, splayed out on a big shrub down by the river. 
but this time with a leg missing, that same one that was trapped under the rock. So, despite his protests, it had been amputated. Neither the leg nor the culprits were ever found. And while it would be nice to think that this was some well-intentioned duo that did this out of the kindness of their hearts to free Floyd, it's much more likely that it was an act of vandalism because Floyd was simply too much of a hot tourist attraction. The following day, Floyd was cast back into the cave, back into his box. Okay, and they it probably didn't throw him like that. I mean, come on. It was covered by a metal lid, surrounded by a metal chain, and locked with a padlock. He was now more trapped than he had ever been. That's this cave statement. had spun fate once again to make sure that its victim would never leave. And so, time passed. Floyd's body would continue to decay. The rot from his body would eventually rot the casket too, and every decade or so, it would need to be replaced. A few years later, he was no longer on display. But even then, he remained in that box for many more years. Huh. Till... By 1989, Floyd's Cave was purchased by Mammoth Cave National Park, and it was closed... Okay, so that's why I was in black and white, and now it's in color. It's in the newer times. ...to the public. There would be no more visitors. There may have been other reasons, but... The entrance itself to Floyd's cave was closed with a steel gate and bolted, then welded shut. But the Collins family never gave up objecting yeah. to Collins' body being left in the cave. And Wait, what? ...never gave up objecting to Collins' body being left... Where did they come from? ...in the cave. And here is where the story ends. In 1989, at the Collins' request, the National Park Service ventured into Floyd's cave. Continuing on a more than 60-year tradition, a team of people worked over the course of several days to remove him from the cave. They took him out, left the cave, locked it behind them, and laid Floyd to rest at the Mammoth Cave Baptist Church Cemetery. After 64 years... Very piano-ish music going on in the background. Sand Cave. He is now finally at peace. Black bars are gone. The end. Thank you to Wendigoon. Okay, so they had different people's faces as different people. Anyway, as far as the editing goes in this, like I said a few times throughout, uh, I mean, it was a pretty, it's a unique style and it does have 2.3 million views and the cutting back and forth and just the way it was paced and the story is a big part, obviously, uh, but the wording in general, I mean, that just shows that you don't need over the top, really punchy editing uh, to hook somebody and keep someone watching. You just really do need a good story and pacing to go through because obviously, as you saw in the intense parts, the pacing picked up, the cuts were a little bit quicker. And now one of the few things that I would say would be a little bit more enjoyable is the movement of certain things. And it just seemed kind of choppy in certain areas. And so your eyes are a little bit, you know, it's a little bit difficult to keep up with. But besides that, uh, it was a different style and a good storytelling uh, video documenting what happened. And yeah, that's Man in Cave, my internet historian. Hey, if you want me to react to anything else, just go ahead and leave it in the comment and... Without further ado, I will see you at the next edit reaction. Edit reaction.